What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos. Today we're going to be taking a brief look at the next big upcoming release from Ubuntu version 15.04. Version 15.04 is set to release at the end of April 2015 so we're just about a month away so we're going to see what's going on in Ubuntu's next big release. So we're going to come over here to GNOME Boxes which is GNOME's virtualization application and we're going to fire up a daily build of Ubuntu 15.04. Now, while this is booting, uh, I like to set the context. Uh, Ubuntu has set out on their this idea of convergence, which is to provide the same interfacer experience across all different form factors, which would be mobile phones, your desktop, and tablets, and laptops, of course. Um, this idea of convergence, they feel, uh, is going to be the way that they pioneer um, this concept of the same user experience across all different form factors, and they want to try to be the first to bring this experience. Uh, so I feel like the Ubuntu team has, quite frankly, ignored the desktop for about two years now. If you go back and look at the you know, last four releases, um, you're not going to see anything new. Uh, and you're not going to see any huge developments in the area of the desktop uh, or the desktop experience. Um, Ubuntu just released their uh, mobile phone, and they're absolutely pouring all their energy, and it shows, <laughs> into the mobile space right now. So, you know, when we log in here to Ubuntu 15.04, you're not going to see anything different <laughs> be between the last release, 14.10, and the upcoming release. So uh, we still have Unity 7. So if you're familiar with Unity 7, which has been the version uh, of Unity that's been used in the last, I want to say, three uh, Ubuntu releases, then absolutely nothing has changed in terms of the kernel. We are still, I want to say we are on version 319. Yes, 319. This I'm not sure when the kernel freeze is for this release. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be um, using the most uh, recent stable kernel. Uh, it's funny, as I was reading a lot of articles about you know what to expect in the next upcoming release of Ubuntu, I feel like there's just a lack, such a lack of features, and not only features, but really improvements. Again, I'm not the kind of user that has to be wowed with a completely new desktop every time uh, the distribution uh, releases an update but at least build upon uh, the foundation or make some under the hood improvements. And there really has been little to nothing done uh, for Ubuntu 15.04. And I'm not trying to be negative, but you know, uh, if I were to give you guys the most informative, honest uh, opinion, uh, if you're using Ubuntu 14.10, um, in terms of just, just from a support issue, you know, I'm not sure when end of life is for Ubuntu 14.10, but that would be the only reason, unless there's a new package that you need or you want a newer version of the kernel, you could always update your kernel. There really is no reason to install Ubuntu 15.04. There really isn't. Uh, so one thing I found comical was, uh, and again, because there's just really lack of any type of development whatsoever in this particular release, a lot of people that are putting articles together have listed what I'm about to show you as an actual feature. So, you know, in Unity 7, there has been an option now for quite some time, if you go into system settings under behavior, for the menus, application menus. By default, they've been included in the menu bar, which is this top panel here. But now, <laughs> As the next big feature in Ubuntu 15.04, they're going to be in the Windows title bar. So instead of being here in the top panel, now you're going to see the menus for the application within the title bar of the window itself. Um, guys, that's it. <laughs> so aside from uh, updated libraries, updated packages, um, there's been some talk of switching from Upstart to System D. That hasn't been, as far as I can see, confirmed yet for the next release of Ubuntu. A lot of major distributions are switching over to System D. Ubuntu seems to be one of the last that are sticking with Upstart. Uh, so that hasn't even really been confirmed yet. Um, but the interface is exactly the same. Um, Unity 7, Unity 8, 
is only available in the Unity Next desktop. So if you want to try that out, you can always install Unity Next from within the repositories. Um, but that's pretty much it. So you have the same lenses. Uh, I'm not particularly a fan of how these lenses work. I don't like how things are displayed personally. Um, I've never used the lenses whatsoever. Uh, I found them a little bit clunky and quirky to work with. Uh, you know, the Ubuntu team touted that, you know, these were going to be huge for developers to be able to create their own lenses. I have yet to see anybody come out with anything that has impressed me for a lens. I haven't seen developers really jump on this and take the desktop to a new level. And I think that's important um, for when you're making a desktop like this. I think of Gnome Shell with their extensions that you get, you know, the idea with the open source especially is, you know, create a development platform and then let users just go crazy and, and pour in a lot of development so that you know you can have your desktop grow organically uh, and be introduced you know to new features and, and new enhancements right from within the community i think that collaborative open source effort is one of the things that makes linux amazing but i just don't see people adopting that philosophy here with uh, ubuntu's unity desktop unity is still built on gnome and they're not even using the most up-to-date version of gnome they're you know using bits and pieces of gnome 312 gnome 314 uh, of course gnome 316 hasn't hit stable yet but that will not be used here in uh, ubuntu 1504 so you're using older versions of gnome it's still a compiz plugin it's not even a full-fledged desktop environment it's just a plugin for compiz compiz is a project that you know the original development developer dropped uh and the individual who's who was maintaining it canonical picked it up but they're only really developing it enough just to keep unity up and running if you were to install compiz config settings manager for those of you who have used compiz in the past you should be very familiar with that uh, that's how you enable all the advanced features of compiz a lot of those things in the settings manager are broken um, so when you start really digging under the hood you find that uh <laughs> Unity is pretty janky to use a, a, I can't really think of, of a better word to use than that. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at what's, what the Linux Mint team is doing with Cinnamon, they have forked from GNOME, they're completely independent of GNOME, now it gives them the freedom to develop their own libraries, their own packages, completely independent of what GNOME is doing, and I think Ubuntu should have done that a very long time ago. Um, you know, they did not adult, uh, adopt GNOME Shell, which quite frankly, I think they should have just adopted GNOME Shell. Um, it wouldn't have fit with their convergence idea, so obviously that's why they didn't do it. Um, but if you want to create something, you know, that you have full control over, I respect that. Um, but at least put the, you know, development into it that's due. You know, when you think about what makes Ubuntu great, it's not the mobile platform. That's new territory what keeps ubuntu active and moving forward is the desktop and that's the least attention that out of all the ubuntu projects that has been given is to the desktop and i think that's where the user base exists and if you want to keep people on your platform if you even want the convergence idea to work i in my personal opinion you need to wow the desktop users you need to wow the people who are using this on laptops and on desktops and then do something with mobile phones. But if you're losing users and you know, you're know you having people that are dissatisfied with your desktop, they're not gonna care what's going on with the mobile OS because you've already turned away your most faithful and your most loyal users. So, you know, again, if you love Unity, then you're gonna like this release because Unity 7, nothing's changed. If you're looking for Unity 8, it's not gonna be here in Ubuntu 15.04. Um, they're not using mirror by default. So, you know, again, that display server that, you know, Canonical has been working on to be able to get Unity running across all these different hardware platform or hardware um, types is not fully supported yet. Uh, and we still have no word from the major um, graphics card hardware companies like NVIDIA or AMD if they're even going to write drivers for these. So, you know, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but again, it's very much of the same old uh, thing with Ubuntu here. Uh, again, I'm not trying to 
to bash on this release. If you like Ubuntu and it works for you, that's that's great. Um, I would just like to see them push the envelope more and be more true to their loyal user base, which is the desktop user. Uh, and then, you know, work on what they're doing with the mobile platform. You know, when you look at the landscape of mobile right now, you've got Android and iPhone that are dominating. You know, if you have a prayer, if it were me partnering with Canonical, uh, if you have a prayer, you know, you've got millions of people that use Ubuntu. Um, so if that's the case, you know, you need to take some of that user base that's on the desktop and migrate them over to the mobile platform. But if you can't keep them on the desktop or even keep them happy on the desktop, how are you ever going to try to move them over to the mobile platform? So no one's going to care if they're, if they're, if they've lost faith in you on the desktop, why would they give you a chance on the mobile platform? If that makes sense. So again, guys, you've got an updated kernel. You've got updated packages. You still have Unity 7. There is no new big feature. Uh, features being released here in Ubuntu 15.04. Uh, you've still got Upstart as of right now. Maybe not. We, I don't think we've moved to System D yet, or we may not even go to System D. Um, so that's what's to expect here. Uh, I do not believe even the spins are going to be really up to date. I think Kubuntu is going to be using KDE 5. I don't believe GNOME, uh, Ubuntu GNOME is going to be using 3.16. Uh, I think they're still going to be on 3.14. So, you know, if you want updated packages and libraries, if you want a more updated kernel, uh, and you're happy with Unity 7, then I'd say go ahead and upgrade to, you know, Ubuntu 15.04. Um, but if you're looking for a huge you know, new feature or something new to the desktop. Nothing really much has changed in the last two years. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be very much the same experience in Ubuntu 15.04 that you had in 14.10. If you're happy, you're going to continue to be happy. If you're looking for something new, you're going to be disappointed. So uh, that's it, guys. That's my brief overview of what to expect in Ubuntu 15.04. Leave your thoughts below on the project itself. I'd love to hear your opinions on Unity on the direction of Ubuntu, on some things that you maybe like to see um, forward from the project. I'd love to see Unity become a standalone desktop environment, completely independent of GNOME. I'd like to see it move from a Compass plugin to a full-fledged desktop environment. Uh, and I would like to see more efforts poured into the desktop because that's where the, the following is. That's where the user base is. Uh, I'd like to see some innovations on the desktop um, before anything happens on the mobile platform, because quite frankly, if I don't have faith in you on the desktop, I'm not going to have faith with you, faith in you on uh, the mobile platform either. So that's just my two cents, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and until next time, we'll catch you guys later.